Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to do the commentariat. This is commentariat number seven, and today's date is the 22nd of March, 2023. It is now spring, officially. It's raining outside. At least it's not snowing, but uh, happy to get the water. It's good for the trees especially when it soaks in like this. Uh, usually in midwinter when we get uh, snow, it just blows away and sublimates and it doesn't sink into the ground. But in March, whatever snow we get melts and snakes into the ground. And that's very good for the trees. Okay, we're going to do a commentary. We're going to take a look at um, comments, uh, starting with the most recent. Here's one from 25 minutes ago. And the comment is to a video called what should go on my go box. Bobby Wade says, I really appreciate the detailed breakdown. Thanks. Uh, you're welcome. A lot of people uh, look at that information these days. Uh, Radio Bro is talking about the most recent video, which is uh, the meter designations versus frequencies and how they really don't agree on HF. It says, good information. Be careful when critiquing technologies of days gone by. Those pioneers were not sloppy. They were working with the best they had to work with at the time. That is true as far as the academics go. But there was a lot of amateur stuff going on. And the amateur stuff actually ended up contributing uh, just as much to the knowledge of the radio art. Um, they were very good, those, those uh, back there. And in fact, I talked about how they were able to measure wavelength. One thing that I failed to mention was that your transmission line, say two wires six inches apart, along which you can roll a little uh, quasi, you know, like pulley wheels, roll along the top of it, and, and little um, uh, copper things braced against those to make connection, and an AC voltmeter in the middle. Now, the, in order for there to be standing waves, they would leave the end either open or shorted. Uh, shorted was probably easier because you knew you'd have a zero there. And so you just started moving the wave meter back like this until you got to the, not the first null, but the second null, and that would be a complete wave. And you could measure that extremely accurately. In fact, when Heinrich Hertz did his first experiments, he tried to figure out what wavelength would be right. And he figured a wavelength of about, oh, two to three meters would probably give him the best results. So his experiments were actually at VHF. Uh, nobody gives that enough credit, but they were at VHF. And they worked just fine. And then Marconi, of course, turned right around and went with... Uh, uh, LF, low frequencies, in, including uh, very low frequencies, uh, to get his uh, communications across the ocean. What they would do in those days to get a radiogram across the ocean, you'd send it to, the, Marconi knew exactly where the, his ships were, and he'd send it and it would be relayed from station to station to station until it got to Newfoundland, where there was a telegraph wire and they could go from there and go back the other way. And that was still very much the environment they were in when they had the Titanic uh, accident. Okay, so, um, yes, Radio Bro, I agree with you completely. They were very sharp people. And radio in the 20s gave way to radio in the 30s with CW and things like that. And there was an almost overnight, about two year, transition from Spark to CW. Uh, Spark, you'd talk about your kilowatt station. Well, about 20 watts of that was actually going out on the air. So a little 20 watt CW um, oscillator with a, a master oscillator and then a power amplifier would be the way to go. Uh, it was somewhere in there, too, that they discovered that crystal oscillators uh, were so steady that you could tell the difference in the length of a day 
from one day to the next. And that's why they went to a better definition of the, uh, the second. Okay, uh, going to try making one. This is a J-pole antenna. Okay, uh, it says, hope all is well in Ridgeway. It's pretty good. I used to eat at the True Grit. Still going all the time when my daughter lived there. Uh, great, and do make a J-pole antenna. Uh, note that you can make J-poles for a variety of frequencies. When they're made for HF, MFJ actually makes one for 70 for uh, 20 meters. They don't call it a J-pole, but it is a J-pole. It's just that the, instead of vertically, they've got the wires stretched out horizontally, which you can do. Now, since that both ends of that transmission line are up here like this, you can um, actively, actually, um, you put the wire on one. You can put another wire over here too that's also a half wavelength. So you've got two half wavelengths being end fed and they're next to each other. So you can do some interesting things with beam forming and so on. Okay, um, this is on the uh, meter bands. Great discussion, Dave. Another point of confusion is to say it's on a lower, higher band, which can be taken as lower, higher frequency, or it's the opposite, meaning longer, shorter wavelength. The convention usually is that the higher band has a higher frequency. So 20 is higher than 40. You know, 6 is higher than 80. Okay. That's the usual convention. I'm not going to say that's universal. Let's see, if you want to get the answer to the original question, skip ahead to 11 minutes. Well, I suppose you can do that, but then you miss all the good stuff before that. Okay, uh, same video. John Huntley, KF0LVD, said, what a great video. I was fascinated by your insight, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay, this one is from Michael Ho with a little bit of uh, Chinese at the top there, talking to APRS uh, with the Anytone D878UV and said that the SSID is a secondary station identification, which clarifies a question I asked in there as to what SSID was. Okay, uh, Groovin. Um, this is an antenna that somehow got misnamed, and this was quite a long time ago. Uh, two people caught this. Uh, how thick must an antenna wire be for sufficient bandwidth? Uh, definitely, I wouldn't make the, the title of anything, so maybe I can go back and uh, re-release that with a better uh, thing. I'm going to write that down, 506 here. So that I go take a look at that. Thank you for pointing that out. Clearly, that's my bad. I can tell from the title that's my bad. Okay, um, here we're back to the meter designations. Uh, P. A. Nilsson SM3 TTZ said here in Europe the 80 meter band is from 3500 to 3800, and um, and then Dave P. 6977 who does not give his location, says in general class, hams here are 3,800 to 4,000. There's fewer, fewer EU contacts for them. Be nice if they overlapped more. Let me look that up because that might be the US. And no, I don't have this memorized. You are correct. The general band in the US is from 3,800 to 4,000, which would mean you don't get European contacts. The solution to that is to upgrade. I really doubt that the FCC is going to change anything. Okay, this next one, why don't we look at single sideband in the time domain? Hi Dave, the SSB waveform can clearly be seen on an oscilloscope when using a two-tone test. You know, I had sent to me a little kit to make a little two-tone tester and it didn't work. The, there was an issue with the uh, circuit board. Um, if anybody knows of a place I can get one cheap, 50 bucks or below, let me know uh, because I would like to do some two-tone tests 
on um, some of these things here to show what happens. The two tones are supposed to be unrelated harmonically. He says typically 400 and 1800. 400 has um, harmonics at 800, 1600, 2000, 2004, whereas 1800, its harmonic is clear out of the band. Now, this is the way you measure linearity in the two. If you put them through the scope, they should have just those two. If they have other things in there, then you're getting intermod, which is better may be described as intermodulation in the nonlinear amplifier circuit. Okay, that's supposed to be linear. Um, if the two tones are exactly the same amplitude, you will see a, a waveform that somewhat resembles AM, except the valleys of the signal actually go to zero. The apparent modulation on the oscilloscope will be at a frequency that is the difference between the two tones. Yes, the beat frequency between the two tones. Uh, AC3BAQ, I would love to try that. I don't have a two-tone generator that I know of. I could look up my signal generator. Maybe it will generate a two-tone output. We'll see. Paul Heller, good video. And here we are again um, about the high band, low band. Is 40 meters higher than the 20 band? No, it's lower. It's the frequency that we're referring to. Okay, uh, the way off base, Paul uh, Crudell liked it. Um, and um, the 33 banana band. Okay, um, tradition and history will get you every time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, the original bands and meters were made to make them easier. Double the frequency, half the meters, yes. It was also intended to reduce harmonic interference with other services. That, that was certainly uh, one of uh, the major uh, reasons for designating the 25 meter band, uh, 75 meter band, because I've heard that referred to as 3.8 to 4 also. Okay. Um, most broadcasting in the tropics, and you will hear a couple stations broadcasting here. Yeah, um, that's what I was just talking about. Thank you for reminding me of the right word, which is tropical, the tropical bands. Okay, this is a question that has plagued my mind since I first started learning anything about ham radio. This was an itch that many or most hams have wanted to itch from the very beginning. You know, I've never actually done the exercise. Um, I've always just assumed these were traditional band names. And as I show uh, in the HF area, 80, uh, well, it's 40 meters on up, that the actual band designation doesn't follow, fall in the band. But tradition, as Tevye would say, tradition. Okay, um, so ones that are way out of whack are roughly in the 5 per 10 percent of the actual band center frequency. So in relative terms, not that band. Yes, it's close. The other thing convenient about the band designations is you see that roughly the key bands are one octave apart. This is true and was done for the reason stated earlier where he said that you try to keep all the ham harmonics within ham bands. 160, 80, 40, 20, 10. Now, as it turned out, the third harmonic on 40 is in 15 meters. So much easier than remembering the actual band centers. The speed of light has been known fairly well for a fairly long time. By the way, I made a mistake on that. Um, I made two mistakes, two key mistakes. Um, I dropped a seven, I made a seven to zero in the next to last digit on the speed of light. And I made one other mistake in there having to do with the meter. It is one ten thousandth kilometer it is 10,000 kilometers, or um, 10,000 kilometers, or 10, or 10 million meters from the equator to the uh, pole. Uh, why not just a, uh, a million? Well, because then that would have made the meter too long. It'd be unwieldy. Okay. 
So, um, yes, the second has needed uh, better definitions. I made a mistake in there, too, um, on um, the number of oscillations of the cesium atom. Instead of zero, zero at the end, it should be seven, zero. So I missed up. Over the years, that'll add up to a second or so. So, okay. Um, this is, video is a good warning for homebrew antennas. Don't cut them to half the wavelength of the band or you will be way off. This is true. This is where the 468 over F comes in. The 468 over F means um, a half wavelength. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a good thing uh, to check. It's a good starting point for a dipole. I'd cut a dipole just a little bit longer than that, wrap the excess back around, and then you've got a little room for tweaking because, and remember the first rule of antennas, everything affects everything. So uh, you will have to tweak it because of environmental factors, how close it is to ground, the quality of the ground, whether the metal objects are close by, and so on, will cause the resonant frequency of that antenna to change slightly from its mathematical value. So that's why we leave a little. We can tweak it. We can make it what we want. Okay? Uh, this is broadband antennas for SDR radios. I just purchased an RSP1A, which is an SDR play um, receiver. I have one. I, at one point, had all three of their models. I gave one away um, and kept two, and I use the RSP1A in normal um, operations when I want to look at the bands and stuff. Okay, on a recent outing, my 12-year-old grandson, who is very interested in AM radio, informed me that he was going to invent an antenna that would work on all bands. Godspeed, child, he said. Hey, you never know. He's already coding computer software, so I have faith. Well, the closest to working on all bands are these broadband antennas for the SDR radios. They will go from, you know, like 100 kilohertz all the way up to 30 megahertz and beyond. Now, they are not cheap. Uh, because they all have a little preamp right at the source, okay? So that will make it uh, uh, work out well. Encourage him in what he does. Encourage him. James, KI5OEB. Uh, I've often wondered about this since I started studying for tech a few years ago. Settled for the just because explanation, which is kind of the answer I gave at the end. It's just that way. Um... Review of MFJ 1886 receive only antenna, uh, which was number 67. Ask Dave number 67, so that was a very long time ago. I'm sure the birds will love these antennas in the horizontal position. They do. They do. Uh, Jim W., thank you for sharing your knowledge. This is shortwave listening. This shortwave listening video, which is number 352, is my most popular video. I think it's had over 600,000 views. It's crazy. So thank you for sharing your knowledge on the subject. I used to listen to Radio Havana, Cuba. It's still there, by the way. On a crystal set built by my dad at night as a kid in the early 60s because it came in so clearly, yes. I have had FM shortwave portable receivers as an adult and have never been successful getting shortwave stations on them. So I've pretty much given up, tried to listen. I may try again after uh, your channel, however. If you have an HF transmitter, one of the newer ones, all transistor, you also have a general coverage receiver. So you can use that for the shortwave band. Uh, MITS stacks says about the all power R600 power station. Enjoy your vids and reviews. Thank you. Uh, Sky 10, total frustration and really bad landings. Dave, I do enjoy your radio and flying videos. I hope you have had time to make other flying videos on your journey to your license. Keeps them all coming. I did receive my license last September, I think it was. I went out to Reno. Uh, they have a light sport aircraft 
uh, flight school out there. I spent eight days with them and went from um, some very, um, oh, how would you say it, scattered training that I'd had. A little here, a little there, nothing coherent. And they put it together for me. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoy the channel. If you could do a couple things for me, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, the first is to tell other people about the channel, if you would. Uh, and uh, also, if you are watching this and you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. It doesn't hurt you in any way. There's no needle prick. There's no blood drawn. Nothing like that. Simply being a subscriber means that you're putting your vote of confidence in this channel. Uh, that's a good channel to watch. That's all it is. Now, if you want to get notified of future videos, you can click the bell. If you click the bell, then yeah, you do get a notification of future videos. So, good talking to you next time we get together. 73.